everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Movie Crusaders. My name's Sean Wasserkrug, and today we're going to be viewing the latest uh, thriller film from Netflix, The Guilty. Uh, the Guilty is actually a remake of the 2018 Danish film of the same name. Uh, it follows Jake Gyllenhaal, who plays a demoted police officer assigned to a call dispatch desk, uh, is conflicted when he receives an emergency phone call from a kidnapped woman. Um, the big thing that the uh, the Guilty has that really works in its favor is A, Jake Gyllenhaal, uh, but also, uh, you know, B, you got Antoine Fuqua. Uh, directing it. Antoine Fuqua is a phenomenal act, or director. Um, he doesn't always do the best things. I mean, his last film was... Uh, oh, God, what was his last film? We hated it. Uh, Brian and I did a review. We hated it. It was uh, Infinite with Mark Wahlberg. But he did do some great films as the Equalizer series, Man on Fire, um, South Paul, Brooklyn's Finest. I like The Magnificent Seven, but some people don't. But Fuqua is a, a great great director and having him um at the helm of this one with jake gyllenhaal who's basically on screen 100 percent of the time uh he is literally having to carry this entire film on his shoulders from the first scene to the last scene everything is locked onto jake gyllenhaal uh he has to act the hell out of this film for you to a believe it b give a shit uh, and see care about the transition through this film. This is a 90-minute film, and all of it rides on him just talking on the phone. Uh, now, people who are fans of the TV show 911, you kind of seen this a little bit on that show. They do a lot of, you know, characters that are 911 operators, and you know they talk for like maybe at most 30 seconds, sometimes longer, depending on the scene. But this is a full-on uh, film based off this character. Uh, Jake Gyllenhaal plays Joe Baylor. Uh, he is a cop that is basically having to ride this desk as a 911 operator. He did something wrong, and that is kind of a mystery going on through this film. They kind of t tiptoe around it, not really giving us what he actually did um, at the beginning of the film. We do find out by the end of the film what he did, but it's one of those things where you're, you're consistently trying to hear and pick up on certain things that some people are saying to him through conversations to, re to really kind of figure out why Joe is stuck at this desk because he seems like a good cop but he also seems a lot like a dick because the way he treats his fellow employees the way he treats some of the people calling 911 it's funny for v viewing purposes but for someone who's actually doing that job he probably should not be answering 911 phone calls but when he does get the inevitable phone call from Emily, played by Riley Cano, that is when the turn changed, and that's where he comes from a cop who's bored at answering 911 phone calls to his actual cop uh, abilities coming through. Um, Emily has been kidnapped by, by someone, and she's basically pretending to talk to her daughter while she's talking to Joe. And that's when the story really kicks into another gear because you have Joe who's basically like a dog with a bone. He is so invested and focused and driven on trying to get Emily safe and back home to her, her daughter uh, that the story is just interwoven through the rest of this film as Jake Gyllenhaal, ha like I said, has to sell the shit out of this film for, to, for you to really care. Um, Jake Gyllenhaal... Clearly, everyone knows he got screwed out of an Oscar nomination, potentially even a win with Nightcrawler. This is another one of those films. He's not going to get the credit he deserves for this. This is hands down one of the best performances uh, from anyone in 2021 so far. Jake Gyllenhaal delivers this performance. He's giving one of his best performances, probably since Nightcrawler, as Joe Baylor. He, ha he has to sell this entire film. And his emotions and his psyche as this time goes on through this film, Jake Gyllenhaal puts on a masterful performance. I wish he'd get the credit for it, but it's a Netflix film. Even though it's directed by Antoine Fuqua, he's not going to get the recognition he deserves. But Jake Gyllenhaal puts on hands down one of the best performances of 2021 uh, that I've seen so far. Uh, I just wish he'd get the credit for it. The film itself... It's 90 minutes of him basically talking on the phone. Does it keep you, you know, on the edge of your seat? Yes, 
but it's still him talking on the phone for 90 minutes. So there are parts in the film, especially towards the middle part of the act, that it is kind of slow or kind of not a lot's going on because either he can't get someone on the phone or he's trying to set up chess pieces for what's going on later in the film and it's just him talking to other people and you're just kind of wanting him to get back on track with the Emily character that can kind of slow down the film even at 90 minutes. But Jake Gyllenhaal's doing a fantastic job during it just kind of makes you wish there's a little bit more to the story or that maybe he went out on his own to try and save Emily instead of being stuck on the phone the entire time. Uh, like I said, it's little nitpicks here and there. Also, the concept of time in this movie is really kind of all over the place. At one point, it's like 9.30 at night, and then literally what makes it seem like 20 minutes later uh, on the film, but it, it feels like 20 minutes because it doesn't feel like any time's really passed in the film based off of what's going on. All of a sudden, it's like 2 a.m., and then, you know, another 30 minutes passes, and it's 6 a.m., and it's like, I, I don't understand the concept of time in this film, but the movie is, is a lot of, well, I don't want to say it's a lot of fun. It is an edge-of-your-seat thrill ride through one of the best performances of Jake Gyllenhaal's career. Uh, it's definitely worth a watch. When it gets to the third act and we start to figure out the story and find out, you know, the X, Y, Z of everything, it does become a little hard to watch. Not in terms of a bad thing, but just of the actual story itself. It's kind of hard to hear and listen to, uh, especially for certain people. And I don't want to say who because I don't want to lead you guys down a path. Honestly, if you guys read the wiki of the Danish film, it, for the most part, follows the, the original film pretty much almost all the way through. So if you've seen the Danish film, you're not really going to see anything different other than a fantastic performance by Jake Gyllenhaal. Um, in terms of recommendations, if you're a fan of Jake Gyllenhaal or you're a fan of just a phenomenal performances in general, I would definitely recommend checking out The Guilty. Um, like I said, it's it's definitely one of those films that is worthy of a one-time view. Are you going to go back and re-watch this over and over and over again? Probably not, but it's definitely worth checking out at least one time for Jake Gyllenhaal's performance. Going to my overall score, I'm going to give The Guilty a 79%. Um, like I said, it does a great job. Gyllenhaal Hall gives the best performance of 2021 so far. Uh, just wish there was a little bit more to do besides him just talking on the phone. But even then, it is still a fantastic watch watching him do that. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you guys did, go ahead and hit that like, share, and subscribe button to the channel so you guys stay up to date with all the latest videos that pop up on the Movie Crusaders. And of course, don't forget to follow us on all the social media outlets you see below. Coming up next, um, <coughs> Venom 2, There Will Be Carnage review is already out, so check out the review for that. Uh, also, Brian Michaels and myself will be here for the Weekend Crusaders where we talk about five movies that come out during this weekend in movie history. And next week, we will have uh, No Time to Die, the final James Bond film with Daniel Craig. So be on the lookout for all those videos. And until next time, in case I don't see you, good morning, good afternoon, and good night, Movie Crusaders. You're still here? It's over. Go home.